Dragon in town. US shoemakers Tart have kicked their Dragon 1.0 to the curb, or they've slaughtered the first Dragon, might be more appropriate, and they've released the Dragon 2.0, which has a new sole and a new pull tab and a couple of other interesting features going for it. So let's take a close look at the new Dragon. The Dragon is a super versatile shoe that I wear with just about any outfit that starts with jeans. The kind of wrinkly waxed commander leather here is a little bit difficult to dress up, but the combination of the rustic leather with the sort of dressy last make for a really interesting shoe that's really good for making like any casual outfit pop. Now relative to the original Dragon, as I mentioned, they've changed the pull tab here to nylon so it's less likely to stick out the bottom of your jeans. The biggest change is definitely the outsole which was originally a studded rubber day-night sole. Now it is a grippier, less formal looking but more functional Ridgeway sole. And also they've added a heavy texture to the leather. So let's take a closer look at the leather itself. So this is a rugged fashion leather called a Waxy Commander from the British tannery CF Stead. And it has a lot of character. Uh, I've had some people say it looks like dragon skin, which is a cool idea. Someone on my Instagram said it looks like wrinkly human skin from a certain body part. Uh, personally, I like it though. The boot comes in six letters right now. There's a kudu one as well, uh, but most of them are the waxy commander. And this color is called London Fog, so it's you know, great. When it came in the mail, it looked more like this, but after wearing them for a few weeks, it's gotten softer and more nappy, and they look a little more like regular suede boots now, although it does have a few wrinkles here. The benefit of the tight fiber structure is that it's meant to prevent any opening or stretching over the toe, and it's waxed in such a way that makes it completely waterproof as well, which is a nice bonus. Now, if you check out CF Stead's website, they make it pretty simple. They recommend one product for taking care of this leather, and that is Dubbin Wax. Dubbin Wax is meant to help to increase the water repellency, protect against stains, and keep the leather supple. So you gotta make sure the boots are clean before you apply it, but then it's relatively simple. You just apply it to a cloth, rub it all over the boots, and then you wanna let them sit for an hour, but ideally overnight before you wear them again. So relatively simple to take care of this. So if this outsole is Ridgeway, uh, which is actually made by the same people that make day-night soles, but it's a bit softer though, and according to Taft, it's more flexible than day-night. This pattern gives it better grip. Uh, it doesn't look quite as aesthetically pleasing when you're looking right at it, but then again, people rarely look directly at the outsole of your shoe anyway. There's a leather insole as well, and everything is attached with a Goodyear welt. That's how the upper is attached to the sole, uh, which is rare for a Taft boot. Most of them, like the Jack boot, have a Blake stitch, which is more lightweight, more flexible. The Goodyear welt puts another layer in the sole that means the upper and the sole are not attached to each other, they're attached to the welt between them. This means that it's very water resistant and a lot easier to resole, but it also means it's a bit less flexible and it's also more pricey than the Blake stitch shoes. Now, far and away my biggest issue with Taft is the sizing. They do not offer any half sizes and they don't offer any other widths outside of the regular D width. So that's gonna disqualify a lot of folks from wearing these boots, uh, sort of myself a little bit. I'm at 11.5 when a boot fits true to size. They urge you to size down on Taft's website if that's the case, but I got the size 11 last time when I got the uh, original Dragons and I found them to be a bit too tight, so now I'm on the size 12 which is fine, uh, but it's a tiny, tiny bit big, you know? So like definitely it's a massive issue, the fact that they don't offer half sizes. Over time though, you know, the boots, like they sort of molded the shape of my foot a little bit. It's not a massive deal, but uh, at the same time, it is a massive deal. They should offer half sizes in my opinion anyway. The, uh, the good news is though, that there was no break-in period with these, even though uh, it is a little bit big on me, uh, not that big, but a little bit big. I didn't get any blisters from moving around the inside of the shoe. Uh, that's probably a lot to do with the fact that it's leather lined, which is a really nice bonus. It's a really cool thing about these shoes. Uh, the arch support is so sorry, but the shock absorption is really good. So, you know, it's a pretty good balance of comfort. So normally these boots are $349. Sometimes they drop to like $279, uh, but normally, yeah, you gotta expect $349, which is about the cost of the Dragon 1.0 shoes. 
And that's like, you know, it's relatively expensive. Anytime a pair of boots is over 300 bucks, people are gonna start looking at it funny. Uh, it is expensive also for a Taft boot because most of the shoes are Blake stitched, which uh, is less expensive, less time consuming to produce. This is a good year. Well, so of course it is more pricey than the other Taft boots. So it's not crazy, crazy expensive for a pair of Goodyear welted boots. Like I think they're pretty high quality. I can sort of understand the price. I would have preferred it to be more like 300 bucks personally, but you know, I always want boots to be a little bit cheaper. It is not the most expensive pair of Goodyear welted boots, but it is more expensive than uh, Red Wing and Wolverine and those sorts of brands. So, you know, you have to make sure that you really like this aesthetic and like the look if you're gonna shell out the cash for these. All right, so why should you consider getting a pair of Taft Dragon boots? Uh, I think they're really snappy boots. Like, I wear these a ton myself. I've been wearing them a lot lately. Uh, as I mentioned, any outfit that starts with a pair of jeans, I think these can work with. Uh, pretty hard to dress up. Like, I don't know if I'd say versatile exactly, but like something like this, like a Henley jeans, they look really good. They really help to like elevate a casual outfit, like make it pop a little bit without making it formal and without like, you know, making the shoes like stick out like they're not supposed to be there, if that makes sense. So that's a function of the leather as well, which like some people don't like, but another big thing about the leather is that it is fully waterproof, which is pretty cool. And since it has a Goodyear welt as well, uh, it's also very water resistant as shoes go. Goodyear welts aren't technically waterproof, but they are much more water resistant than Taft's other boots. So that's gonna make it a good thing for a lot of folks uh, because most of Taft's boots are Blake stitched. It's also got pretty good shock absorption as well, and it's fully leather lined. So it's pretty comfy and I did not have any blisters on breaking, so you know, not bad. The main potential downsides with this boot, uh, some people just hate the way the leather looks, like this sort of like wrinkly, suede sort of looking leather. Uh, some people think it looks weird. It is hard to dress up, but I think again, this combination of like the rustic leather and the more dressy last of this shoe. Again, it's a very interesting sort of look. I think it works, but yeah, some people hate the leather. The leather's also a little bit hard to take care of. Applying wax can be a bit annoying, uh, and once the wax wears off, then the shoes become less waterproof. It can be a bit difficult to keep track of that. So that's a there's sort of a layer of upkeep that some people don't love so much with this sort of leather. Um, that's sort of an individual thing. It is pretty pricey as well, 350 bucks. That is not a cheap pair of shoes. I encourage you to keep an eye on their website because I have seen them drop down to under 300 bucks a couple times. Generally though, yeah, it's it's 350 bucks. It's not crazy cheap. It's not crazy expensive, honestly, for a pair of Goodyear welted boots. Like you should have some perspective with that, but still 350 bucks. And then finally with the fits, uh, yeah, my biggest issue with Taft is they don't have half sizes and they don't have any wider or narrower sizes. So honestly, the 12, it, it does fit fine. It's not a huge deal, especially after about a week of wearing it. It's fine, but they really need to get off their ass and start doing half sizes, in my opinion. All right, those are my thoughts on the Taft Dragon 2.0. Uh, I like them, I think the leather's pretty cool. It's fully leather lined, it's pretty comfy. Uh, Taft, they make boots that are pretty unusual, like the Jack boot is a really good example of this. They tend to use unusual leathers, unusual styles. Some people don't like how they don't look very, very traditional, but you know, with the right outfit, Taft boots, they really can help make an outfit pop, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, let me know in the description what you think of these boots, and also make sure you subscribe as well, because I've got a whole lot more boot reviews and comparisons, and all other kinds of videos coming up.